comes to the definitions in Article 100. Uh, some of them are very simple. Some of them, of course, are not. Overcurrent is a definition that is somewhat simple, but fully understanding it uh, is a bit more complex. So overcurrent is defined as current that exceeds the rating of equipment or current that exceeds the ampacity of a conductor. So conductors can be subjected to overcurrent and equipment can be subjected to overcurrent. And we have to protect both against overcurrent. We have to protect equipment from overcurrent and conductors from overcurrent. So Article 240 protects conductors from overcurrent. That's all Article 240 does. It does not protect equipment. If you want to protect equipment from overcurrent, you have to go to the equipment article. So for example, if I'm supplying a transformer, I go to Article 240 to protect the conductors feeding the transformer and the conductors leaving the transformer. For protecting the equipment, the transformer itself, I go to the transformer article, which is Article 450. Same thing with panel boards or receptacles or anything else, all right? So overcurrent can happen to conductors or it can happen to equipment, and we use different article, articles of the code to protect each. Now, overcurrent can result from an overload or a ground fault or a short circuit, and it's really important that you understand that you have to protect against all three, or you don't have overcurrent protection. If all you have is overload protection, that's not overcurrent protection, it's overload protection. If all you have is ground fault and short circuit protection, that's not overcurrent protection, it's ground fault and short circuit protection. So usually we protect against overloads and ground faults and short circuits with one device and we call it an overcurrent device. Most, more specifically, we call it a branch circuit overcurrent device. Sometimes, however, when we get into some complex pieces of equipment or complex circuits like feeder taps or motors or air conditioners or transformers, sometimes we provide overcurrent protection in different unique ways. Search on my channel for the video on feeder taps and the video on air conditioners. And I'll link to them in the bottom because I think it does a good job of, of really delineating the difference between overloads and ground faults and short circuits and how we protect things when it gets a little bit more difficult than just popping in a 20 amp breaker and calling it good. So overcurrent is current in excess of the conductor's ampacity or the equipment's rating from an overload, ground fault, or short circuit. Now, what's an overload, ground fault, or short circuit? Well, overload is defined in Article 100. An overload is operation of equipment in excess of its rating or operation of a conductor in excess of its ampacity. Short circuits and ground faults are not overloads. All right, so here's a conductor that I took a picture of. They had to replace these conductors at a facility where I was teaching uh, because it was uh, coming out of a transformer. They had to replace the transformer because the transformer was grossly overloaded and the conductors coming out of the transformer were also grossly overloaded. This conductor uh, started its life as a brown conductor and you can see it was turning black from an overload. Um, Another conductor in the same installation, you can see where the insulation was failing as a result of an overload. Remember, when we overload a conductor, what, what is the point of failure? I mean, does the copper melt? Does the aluminum melt? No. I mean, it takes an awful lot to melt copper or melt aluminum. What fails is the insulation. So insulation failure as a result of overload. This conductor was not protected against overcurrent Otherwise, this failure would not have happened. All right, so overloads, ground faults, and short circuits. Ground faults are defined in Article 100. We already covered that in a different video, but that's where you take an ungrounded conductor and smack it up against metal parts. Short circuits are when we have two ungrounded conductors and they make contact, or perhaps a grounded conductor or neutral and an ungrounded conductor making contact. That would be a short circuit as well. Now, we protect against overloads differently than we protect against ground faults and short circuits. Uh, an overload is a small increase in current over a long duration of time, and if you let it go, then you would have a failure like we have here in the photograph. A ground fault or a short circuit is an emergency. 
Uh, that is thousands of amps of current flowing, hopefully only for a very brief duration of time, like less than three cycles or so, and it opens the overcurrent device, or at least it opens the ground fault short circuit protection device. So overcurrent is any of those three things, overloads, ground fault, short circuits, overcurrent protection is protection against all three. Now, as I mentioned, usually we use one device to protect against all three forms of overcurrent. Uh, in your bathroom at your house, you've got a 20 amp circuit. Well, maybe not in your bathroom, but for your bathroom, you have a 20 amp circuit breaker. Uh, if you plug in five hair dryers and a curling iron, that 20 amp breaker is going to trip. That's an overload. If you were to decide to cut the cord on your hair dryer while it's plugged in, that's going to be a short circuit or a ground fault, and that's going to trip the uh, 20 amp circuit breaker as well. So uh, an overcurrent device, branch circuit, is a device that can provide protection for services, feeders, or branch circuits, and it has an interrupting rating that's appropriate for the installation, but never less than 5,000 amps. All right, so these two are branch circuit overcurrent devices. They protect against overloads and ground faults and short circuits. We also have overcurrent devices that are not intended to provide the full overcurrent protection that we require in the code. Overloads, ground faults, and short circuits, or perhaps they have a low enough interrupting rating that they don't qualify as a branch circuit overcurrent device. So maybe I just want some extra protection because I've got a motor and maybe the motor has internal overload protection, but maybe I just want a little bit more protection. So I decide I'm going to install just a little inline fuse. That might be a supplementary overcurrent protection device, and these are also defined in Article 100 as a device that provides limited overcurrent protection that's in addition to the required branch circuit overcurrent device. So if you can see on the fine print here, it says this is designed for supplementary motor protection. It, it's just there to give you some extra protection, it doesn't substitute for the required circuit breaker or fuse that's protecting the conductors or protecting the motor. So that would be a supplementary overcurrent device. If you go to section 240.10, it talks about them. And it also has some, uh, some allowances in 240.24 that mentions that these things do not need to be readily accessible. So maybe I want to protect my, uh, my parking lot light and I put in a little one amp fuse. That could be all the way up in the top of the, of the pole for all we care. That's a supplementary device and supplementary devices don't have to be readily accessible like your typical overcurrent devices do in section 240.24. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and ring the bell.